Guys, simplify the following. First of all, it would be the most forbidden of all forbidden rules, and I saw many of you do this, so pay attention. Because of the subtraction sign, you cannot just do square that, square that. That's 2x squared, negative 1 squared. That's breaking the most forbidden rule of all forbidden rules in math. You can't just do that. Subtraction means you can't do that. So those of you that did that, do not do that. Those of you that got this far, this is a good first step, good sign. If you were able to remember, oh yeah, I need to split this apart and rewrite it as 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. 90% of you remember that, which is great. Now watch what happens. A lot of you are on the right track. You'd realize it's multiplication, so I need to distribute. So everybody, we're going to focus on 2x. Let's distribute it through to both of these, right? 2x times 2x, this is where 90% of you that got this far got it wrong. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Right? Does everybody see why? Now 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Now I can scribble out this 2x because I distributed it through. Now we're going to distribute negative 1 through. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And from there, a lot of you are confusing this with i squared. i squared is not a, okay, i is an actual number, guys, an imaginary number. It's not a variable, and I maybe wasn't clear on that. So people are going, so i squared is negative 1, but this is x squared. That's a variable. This is an actual number. i is like a number. So you can't change this to negative 1. x squared, not anything squared, just negative 1. That's where a lot of us went wrong after that. So guys, 4x squared is simply 4x squared. There's no other x squared to combine it with. Negative 2x minus 2x, don't say 0, see, that's negative, how many x's? Guys, negative 4x, right? Plus 1. Can I combine an x squared with an x? No, we can't combine an x with a 1. These are not like terms. This is in standard form. Highest degree, degree 2, the lowest degree. So degree 2, degree 1, and a constant. So now we know we've written it right. That's our answer, guys. After today, I expect you to be able to just plow through that and get it right. Okay. Most of you just made little errors. Okay, we're going to get started right away on the lesson. So everybody have your worksheet in front of you. We're just going to work right off of that. Now, everybody make sure you pay attention because there's a lot of things that are on the worksheet that I'm going to talk about and go over because I teach it a little bit different than the worksheet kind of portrays. <clears throat> okay, so here's our first lesson of our next unit. So, here we go. So, um, today we're going to be dealing with angle relationships. Now, once again, you have to come into my class with an open mind, right? It's not, oh, I hated this because I remember learning it last time and I didn't understand it. You're giving it a whole new mindset. Think of how unit one went really well for most of you, and most of you feel better about the class. You have to just start this with an open mind. If you've learned it in the past, you're learning it my way. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with parallel lines and transversals, and I'll get into what those are. So look at this picture right here. You guys have the same picture on your desk. Notice. Um, actually, understand what? We need to understand what a parallel line is. So everybody highlight these lines, A and M. These are parallel lines. What a parallel line means by definition is that the lines will never intersect. Now, these lines continue forever. So this is going this way. Line A is going this way forever and this way forever. And line M is going this way forever and this way forever, and those two lines never intersect. That, by definition, is a parallel line. Makes sense, right? Yep. They even look parallel. So then also we have what's called a transversal. You do need to know what a transversal. Notice I highlighted transversal. You kind of can just copy exactly what I have up here. So a transversal is this line that cuts through parallel lines. A transversal is a line that cuts through parallel lines and touches both sides. Um, no, you've got it. Look, it says it right up there. So mine is exactly like yours. But I would highlight this transversal in a different color. Now look, everybody. What happens when we have two parallel lines and a transversal is a, a transversal cutting the parallel lines is it creates a bunch of angles. So do you see how we have angle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? It creates all these different angles. And there's all these different angle relationship pairs, meaning some angles in here are equal, some add up to be 180, and that's what we're going to learn. Does that make sense? Okay, so the next thing 
I want you to do is look at the next little piece of your note. We're going to fill in, given parallel lines, we're going to fill in what is considered exterior angles. So we have to just get some vocabulary down. So an exterior means the outside. If I say to you the exterior of your house, that means the outside of your house, right? So which are considered exterior angles? Yep, so right, exterior here. Exterior, exterior. And then maybe even highlight that in a color or something. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna start I'm gonna also put a star, you guys can highlight. Look, those are outside angles. See how they're outside of the parallel lines. Seven and eight are exterior angles. Does everybody understand? And one and two are exterior angles. So maybe highlight those the same color you wrote, you highlight exterior. So I did mine in blue. Now, these are considered in, so exterior on the outside of the parallel lines. Now these are called interior angles. They're inside the par parallel lines, so interior. And notice I'm going to put some like stars here in that color. So those are my inside interior angles. So if I say the interior of your house, you mean the inside of your house, inside your parallel lines. Um, now it's more vocabulary we're just learning is the word alternating. So alternating will be on opposite sides of the line. So, I mean, just no, I, you just have to get used to it. There's no colors here. So alternating. Um, angles are on different sides of a line. So this side and this side are alternating. Does everybody understand? And there's nothing to really write, but just maybe put a star. And then same side will be called, also you'll see the word consecutive. So that's on the same side. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to highlight in yellow the same side angle. So couple different on the same side. Do you see how four and six are on the same side of the line? Guys, and then, so those are consecutive. Do you see how these two are on the same side? Those are considered consecutive angles, one right after another. Also, I could highlight two and four here, because those are consecutive angles, one right after the other on the same side of the line. Also, six and eight are pairs that are consecutive, one right after another on the same side. Seven and five are consecutive, three and one are consecutive. So I'm going to maybe get... A different, and I'm going to star, just getting you seeing it. You don't even have to highlight yours. Just looking because it might get too messy in here. So alternating would be like three and six. Do you see how they're on opposite sides? If I draw on the line? No, um, those are on the, so good question. Do you see how these are actually on the same side? Those are consecutive. Good question. So alternating. Um, another alternating would be five and four. Um, those are actually called what I call vertical angles. So I'm going to add in some new things that they don't have on here because I'm like, why don't they have those? Okay, so we will go back and fill in our thing a little bit. Okay, go on to the next one. So it says, one pair of each angle type is shown below. Find the other angle pairs. So what I want you to notice is these are what I call corresponding angles. So maybe right down here, right under it, corresponding for me. Now, what corresponding means, they sit in the exact same spot, but on the different parallel line. So do you see how this is on top of the parallel line, and then this is on top of the parallel line in the same spot? Do you see how they even look alike? Corresponding angles are equal. They even look alike. Like, literally look at them. Boom, boom, we can tell they're equal. So those are corresponding angles, meaning they sit in the same spot, but on different parallel lines. So maybe you're right, and they're equal. They're equal angles. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and find some other pairs that are considered corresponding. Now notice what I do here. So isn't 6 and 2 corresponding angles as well? They sit on the same spot on top of the parallel line on the same side. So those would be equal. So I'm going to change colors. Let's do everything that's equal, that's corresponding. Wouldn't 8 and 4? They're both on the bottom of the parallel lines. Is everybody seeing it? So those are corresponding angles because they both sit on the bottom of the parallel lines on the right side. Now look, three and seven are also corresponding. They're on the bottom and on the left side. So they they all, and they even look alike. Like look at them, boom, boom. They look exactly like they're equal. They're both corresponding angles. Okay, next type is called alternate interior angle. So notice four and five are alternating. Boom, 
boom, on opposite sides, they're called alternating, alternate. They alternate, and they're inside the parallel lines. So they're what we call alternate interior. So there's only two alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles, guys, are also equal. So write that, equal in parentheses. Now look at them. They even look alike. You see how alternate and they're inside the parallel lines. They're going to be equal and they even look alike, so it makes sense. So looking at what are some other alternate interior angles? Three and six. They alternate. They're inside the parallel lines and they are equal. They even look alike. Yeah, those are the only ones. Okay, so on the next one, these are called alternating because look at our lines. They're on opposite sides of the lines. So they're called alternate and they're on the outside of the parallel lines. So that's what we call alternate exterior on the outside. And they're also equal angles. They're alternate. There's our transversal. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. And they're both on the exterior. Alternate exterior angles are equal. So there's one more pair. And look at them. One and eight, they even look equal. It's like our picture doesn't trick us. So um, looking at this, isn't seven and two alternate exterior angles? So these would be equal as well. Questions on any of those? Okay. Okay, so this one, these are considered consecutive, consecutive, and they're inside. Consecutive means one right after the other. Consecutive interior. Now notice they're definitely not equal. Look at the picture. They are not equal, correct? Look at them. They're not equal. There's no possible way. But the rule is they actually will add up to be a sum to be 180 degrees. So if you add up angle five plus angle three, angle five plus angle three, it's going to equal 180 degrees. So they're consecutive, one right after another, look, boom, boom, on the same side of the uh, line of the transversal, and they're inside the parallel lines. So what are some other ones that are consecutive interior? Six and four, right? Aren't they consecutive one right after another, guys? Yeah. And they're inside. So those are consecutive inside angles, consecutive interior angles. Questions? Yep, consecutive exterior. And they also will add up to be 180 degrees. So this angle plus this angle out of 180. This angle plus this angle out of 180 degrees. Consecutive means on the same side of the transversal. Uh, and I don't even really like this relationship because consecutive usually means one right after another. You know what I mean? But these are consecutive angles, but they're just straight. I call these straight line angles because see how it makes a straight line. So consecutive exterior angles out of 180. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Next thing here, I don't even know really where we're going with this, um, this next part here. Okay, so just some vocabulary here. It says two figures or objects are considered congruent. So if I say to you two angles are congruent, that means they are equal. That's all I want to go with this. Um, and then two angles are considered supplementary. If I say two angles are supplementary, so congruent means they're equal. Supplementary means they add up to be 180. They add to be 180 degrees. So we have a bunch of congruent angles in here. We have a bunch of supplementary angles in here. So what I'm going to have you do is flip back to the very top. Remember back to this picture that I had you highlight. What I want you to go through is maybe just think about, and if your paper is going to get messy, but I want you to look at some things with me. So let's go through, and you guys can even just watch, really, but I want you maybe looking. Let's go through and list out all the congruent angles. Now congruent means they're equal, so there's corresponding angles. Corresponding angles will be equal. So I'm going to show you in blue what are corresponding. Corresponding means sits in the same spot on 
on the exact same spot on different parallel lines. So isn't one and five corresponding? It's in the same spot. Isn't six and two corresponding? How about four and eight? How about seven and three? Those are corresponding angles. They're equal. Does everybody understand? Okay, and then let's go through. I'm maybe going to erase if you don't mind. I'm going to erase that. So now what else are equal angles? We know that there are um, vertical. Okay, this is new. Write it down. Vertical angles. I don't know why they didn't write this anywhere. Vertical angles are equal as well. They're congruent. These are vertical angles. Three and two. Do you see how they're vertical from each other? Seven and eight. Six are vertical angles. They're equal. Five and eight are equal. They're um, vertical. And four and one are vertical. So they're equal. Um, those are actually outside. Those are equal, but those would be equal because they're, they're opposite exterior. So also alternate, like you just said, alternate exterior angles are also equal. So I'm going to erase that to not confuse anybody. So in green, I'm doing this. Alternate exterior. So like we just said, one and eight are equal, right? And then two and seven would be equal. And then also, I'll do it in pink, alternate interior angles are congruent. Alternate interior are congruent. That means five and four are congruent, three and six. Everybody good? That means they're equal. Okay, so then these are all the ones that are considered um, supplementary. So supplementary, which means they add up to be 180. How do you even spell that? Hurry. Okay. So straight line angles, and we never even talked about that. So straight line angles, they add up to be 180, which makes sense. A line adds up to be 180, guys. So let me show you all the straight line angles. Those are straight line angles. Those two add up to be 180. Those two add up to be 180. These two add up to be 180. You see how it just makes a straight line? So it makes sense. So then also, isn't three and four straight line angles? They add up to be 180. 1 and 2 out of 2, 180. 5 and 6 out of 2, 180. And 7 and 8 out of 2, 180. We're almost there, and then we just get to start practicing these. So what else out of 2, 180? Um, consecutive, um, consecutive exterior, yep, consecutive exterior. And consecutive interior, so 6 and 4 out of 2, 180. One. Second, what in the Sam am I doing? Executive interior. So those two out of two one eighty, those two out of two one eighty, and then consecutive exterior. So those two out of two one eighty, right? And then one seven. Okay, here we go. So let's go to. I just want you to look up here. This is not on your worksheet because before we jump into it, I think this is going to be really beneficial. If I say, if it says to us, fill out the entire diagram, there's many ways we can do this. It gives me angle one is 110 degrees. So 110 degrees, you're just watching. So if we know this is 110 degrees, we can go about this very all, there's many ways. Isn't this a vertical angle to this? So this is 110, what's this? 110, okay, perfect. Now, isn't this a straight line? So it needs to be 180. So if this is 180, then this must be? 70. If this is 70, what's this? 70 degrees. Now, don't these two add up to be what? 180. Is everybody seeing this? It's pretty straightforward. So this is 110, right? So then 180, these add up to be 180. So 70. So then what's this? 70 because it's a vertical angle. And what's this? 110 because it's a vertical angle. And there's 20 other ways you could have filled this out. Pretty easy. That's all we're doing today. So let's do this one. Fill out the entire diagram, go for it. Let's fill this out. So it's not on your worksheet. I just want you to maybe write down. Angle one's this, so on a whiteboard. Now here's the thing, notice we have to determine which ones are parallel lines and are transversal. So um, people kind of get confused. So what I want you to do is highlight your parallel lines. So do you see how M and N are definitely going to eventually intersect? Yeah. They're not the parallel ones. So what I want you to do is take your highlighter and highlight the parallel lines real quick. 
Now, our transversals are what cut parallel lines. So what's easiest, and one thing to note, is you can only work from, um, you, the angle relationships are only between the parallel lines and the transversal. So you can't work this way. As in, let me show you what students do. They start working like this. They'll say, oh, these two add up to be 180. But that's not across the parallel line. That doesn't work. So what you should do every time, for the most part, is literally what I want you to do is not even look at this transversal and just focus on this transversal for a minute. So now we can always use our angle relationships between parallel lines, but only between parallel lines. Does that make sense? So you see all these aren't between parallel lines? It doesn't work that way. So what happens is people see all of this going on and they start getting confused. So just, if you need to for a minute, cross out the one and ignore it, and then you can go back to it. Okay, let's fill this in now. Um, so it gives us angle two. So we're starting over here on this transversal. So angle two is 97 degrees. So right here, write it in, 97 degrees. And now we can just fill it in however we want. So let's maybe do it a little differently this time. If this is 97 on top of the parallel line, isn't this corresponding? Yeah. So won't this be 97 degrees? Okay. Now we can do this so many different ways. Once again, if this is 97, isn't this a vertical angle? So this must be 97 too? Yeah. Okay. And this is 97, this is a vertical angle, so this is 97 degrees. So now we have to figure out, okay, we have straight lines after that. We have straight line angles. So that should add up to be 180. So wouldn't you do 180 degrees minus 97 degrees to see what's left over? So 83 degrees. So I'm going to erase that pink line real quick. So this is 83 degrees. And then this is a corresponding angle. So this is 83 degrees. And this is alternate interior aren't they equal 83 degrees and then this is a vertical angle or straight line here is eight there's just so many ways to think about it okay so we filled that in so now let's answer what we can so it says angle three is what we said 97 degrees it says what's the angle relationship you use to get it so yours might be different than mine so i'm going to say vertical vertical to angle two so you have to be specific on how you know it's the same does that make sense? We said at three, we were given two, angle two, right? So that's what we're going with this, is we're saying, given angle two, how were you able to fill out the rest? So I'm gonna make sure you, so it has to be compared to angle two. So we said it's vertical to angle two, that's how we know. Now it says, is that congruent or supplementary? Well, congruent means they're equal. So aren't they equal? So we would say congruent. Okay, let's figure out how we got angle 10. So angle 10 was 97 degrees, correct? Now compared to angle two, what kind of angle was that? Wasn't it, look, angle two and angle 10, aren't they considered corresponding? So we have to answer it in terms of angle two, what we were given. So we'd say corresponding, which means they sit in the same spot. So they're corresponding to angle two. This one's corresponding to angle two. Is it congruent or supplementary? Congruent, they're equal. And I'm going to highlight over here, I'm going to underline, we're going off that angle every time, just to answer this. Angle 9 was 83 degrees. What kind of angle is that compared to angle 2? Well, we used, it's, let's not, let's say, okay, so didn't we, I mean, it has nothing to do with angle 2, does it? But it did have to do with angle 3, right? On these two consecutive interior angles. So shouldn't they add up to be 180? Does that make sense? I mean, there's just so many ways you can answer it. That's why it's hard. There's not just one right now. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So we could just say, um, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would say angle 3 plus angle 9 equals 180. So that's how we figured it out. Like, I don't really care what your answer is as long as it makes sense and it's true. So that was considered supplementary because I added to be 180. So angle five, how do we find angle five? Okay, so now we're on the other transversal. So I'm gonna erase that, and now we're just gonna focus over here. Can I erase this stuff? Just to give myself some room. Yeah. Okay, cool. Here we go. 
So now we're given an angle six. So I'm going to draw in these are my parallel lines. That's my transversal, and we're focusing on that piece now. So we're given angle six is 83 degrees. So we could go in and fill it in. Let's maybe do it in order here this time. So angle five is what? Good, 97 degrees. Well, how do we know that? Because that's a straight line angle, right? Look. Yep, so you'd say um, those are um, straight line angles. Straight line angles. Um, so we know they're supplementary. Does everybody see how we got that? They, people recognized, oh, look, straight lines out of 180. So they took 180 degrees and they subtracted 83 degrees, which gave us 97 degrees. So that's how they knew to put in a 97 here. And now we can fill in, but let's just answer this question. What's angle seven? Now we're going in order. This makes it a little easier. What's angle seven? 83. So we could do that two different ways, either straight lines or vertical angles. So I'm just gonna say vertical. So vertical angles are congruent. So that's how you knew, since those are vertical, ding, ding, this must be 83 degrees. And then it says, what's angle 16? Good, uh, yes, 97. And there's a lot of ways we could have got there. How were you able to see it? Exterior. Okay, yes. So what we were looking at too, I mean, there's, yes, that's another way. This and this, aren't they um, alternate exterior angles? Um, well, oh, you just went through and found 13 and then found that. You could just write that. I found 13 by this, and then 13 and 16 are vertical. So any, like, true, because there's so many true statements, that any one that you write out that is true, I will give you the correct answer. Yes, so you could have figured out, you could have worked your way through and figured out what this angle is and done straight line angles. You could have worked your way through and figured out what that angle was and done straight line. Does that make sense? Yes. There's many ways to do it. That's what makes things a little um, interesting, is you can do it so many ways. And so the, uh, those were congruent, the way we did it. So any of your statements could work as long as you come up with a valid statement of how you got it. Okay, that's it. The rest of the times you're, so flip to the worksheet. Notice they just want you to tell what kind of angles you're dealing with. So I want you to change the instructions at the top. So it says identify each pair of angles as corresponding. So remember what corresponding means, they sit in the same spots. So you're gonna keep corresponding. You can also choose alternate interior. Alternate exterior is an option. Consecutive interior. And then vertical. And then also I'm okay with straight line angles. You can use any of those to describe. Straight line angles. So you can add that one on there, straight line. We're not gonna do, no. That, there's too many weird words. Let's just keep it straightforward. Straight line angles. You're going to be asked to do the math, and it's, let's not get too caught up in the wording. That's what I feel like. So answer is their corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, consecutive interior, vertical, or straight line. Then I also want you to write, if they're corresponding, they're, I want you to write, oh, these are equal in parentheses, or they sum to be 180. So you should have two answers. Does that make sense? Okay, so answer B, you'll pick either those or and these. Okay, go.